Hi, I'm Mark Rabin from Value Capture. Today we're doing a quick preview of a live panel discussion webinar titled, Why Does the U.S. Need a National Patient Safety Board? That's going to take place on January 25th at 1 o'clock Eastern. Today we're going to hear a little bit from the two panelists. They are Dr. Karen Wolk-Feinstein and Ken Siegel. To register for this event, go to www.valuecapturellc.com slash webinars, or you can look for a link in the show notes. So if you're able to join us live on the 25th, you can submit questions, you can be part of um, what's going to be a lively and informative discussion. If you're not able to attend live, register anyway, and we'll send you a link to the recording on this um, really important topic and concept, the National Patient Safety Board. So next, um, we'll, we'll be joined by Dr. Karen Wolk-Feinstein. So Karen, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm doing well. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the discussion on the 25th. And maybe you know, I can ask you in your own words to, to tell us about who you are. Well, I am the uh, president, CEO of a healthcare foundation, the Jewish Healthcare Foundation here in Pittsburgh. Um, about 25 years ago, we established a supporting organization called the Pittsburgh Regional Health Initiative, which is a regional safety and quality collaborative of the major stakeholders in healthcare. And you've been working on, you know, on this concept and this proposal and, and now the bill around the National Patient Safety Board. Um, you know, we'll, we'll hear more about this on the 25th, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on you know, why this is such an important concept for you. Well, as I mentioned, it's been 25 years since we founded a regional collaborative to make healthcare safer. And to remove many of the harms in healthcare that kill so many thousands of people. Some, some would say as many as 250,000 people a year, but there are adverse events that are preventable. And that makes it particularly sad. So many people go to healthcare settings to be healed and not hurt. We have tried many interventions over the years, but a lot of them put a lot of stress on the front line. Mm. They ask the front line to do more than their basic clinical duties. They ask the front line to sometimes interrupt their daily workflow to deal with problems as they arise. And as time went on, I started to say to myself, what if I worked harder at removing those problems before they arise so that our frontline staff are not distracted and not required to deal with problems that, are, that never should have happened. Mm -hmm. So I think of other industries where so much safety is autonomous, where technology has been deployed to put rovers and robots on Mars. Yeah. Um, Opportunity walked around Mars, what, for over a year. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, I know that we can't get people out of outpatient surgery often without an infection or a knife slip or something that went wrong that shouldn't have. Right. Some things will be harder to prevent than others, but we could at least start scaling back all the ways in which equipment fails us or our alarm and alert system doesn't work or we have. Um, on the floor, some poor designs of um, the whole uh, care process that should have been fixed a long time ago. So when I think of the opportunity now to spread best practices across the country, not have little islands, little pockets of excellence and breakthroughs mm -hmm. in one setting or another, but to start to scale up what we know works, I get very excited about the opportunity to set up a national patient safety board that spends every day um, with a multidisciplinary team of experts focused on how do we make healthcare safer and more reliable and ask the front line of care, mm -hmm. our nurses, other people on the floor or in practice, or in a skilled nursing facility, how do we make it so that they're not putting out as many fires? They're not encountering as many problems. 
And so when we reach this, this state that that's better for everybody involved, patients, caregivers, payers, organizations, right? Well, I, it's hard to see a downside, yeah. um, except the obvious downside in healthcare. For some reason, it's the one industry that seems to me to be the most resistant to change, even if it's better. Mm. Even if the change means an improvement in outcomes of care and less burden on the frontline staff, people will find a reason. Health professionals often find a reason to say, well, I'm not sure why I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a better idea. And I don't even have a strong objection. Something inside me says that change itself is something to fear. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for you know, sharing some of your perspectives there just as an a introduction. Um, to the subject, I encourage people to go and register for the webinar at valuecapturellc.com slash webinars. Uh, if you register for the event, you'll receive some links to some information, including an opportunity to learn to read more about the National Patient Safety Board through their website and uh, the bill um, as, as it was submitted. So um, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions and be part of you know, this lively panel on January 25th. So Karen, thank you uh, in advance for, for being part of that. And thank you for being here today um, to give us a bit of a preview. Thank you, Mark. So we're now joined by Ken Siegel, CEO of Value Capture. Thanks for joining us, Ken. How are you? Hey, Mark. I'm great. Thanks for having us. Well, I'm excited about um, the session on the 25th. And as, as Karen did, tell us a little bit more about yourself in your own words. Who, who, who are you? What do you do? Uh, Ken Siegel and I have the privilege of leading Value Capture. We are a mission-focused, uh, trusted advisory firm uh, that is committed to helping healthcare leaders and their teams who want to eliminate harm, so eliminate injuries due to healthcare itself. Uh, so the topic of uh, a National Patient Safety Board and this webinar is very near and dear to our hearts. Yours and and mine and the value capture team and and Karen, you know, there's a, a long history, especially the the two of you working and advocating in in different ways. Right. Um, so looking ahead to the session on the 25th, again, we'll hear more detail about the yeah. what, and people can go and read uh, about the proposals and and the bill. But you know, how how would you answer the question of you know why is this important to you? Why is this meaningful um, to 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 be working on and talking about? Uh, thanks, Mark. Well, and I think for all of us who have an interest, um, you know, one of the great tragedies is for people who are vulnerable and need healing to instead be harmed by their health care quite unintentionally, mm -hmm. which not only victimizes the person, but victimizes the healthcare workers and institutions that don't mean this to happen. But, but, it, but it happens due to complexity and the changes we have to make and how we run and manage ourselves so that we can learn faster from errors and, and do more effective prevention. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is we know no harm needs to occur, that it is possible to prevent all healthcare associated harm, even the harm that we don't have a deep understanding of how to prevent right now, because with the right mindset, we can learn how to do that. Right. So we we have to acknowledge, you know, part of why this is so important is we have to acknowledge that in two decades of really bringing national acute focus to this, we have done some things. We have established that healthcare harm is preventable by driving a couple of areas much closer to zero than they were, but we haven't affected the whole scope of the problem. We still have one in four Medicare beneficiaries who are hospitalized harm during their hospital stay. Yeah. So we have to uh, take account of where we are and design some strong countermeasures to get the path of improvement to accelerate. And when we looked at it, uh, the creation of a National Patient Safety Board as a central resource to coordinate a much more powerful, connected learning and prevention and improvement system around safety and healthcare seemed like an obvious next piece that we really need or could make great use of to accelerate those gains that we need. And it'll be interesting to hear more about how that NPSB yeah. would play a role. 
um, how that w- how that organization would would maybe help inspire organizations or help them or support them or, or spread and share knowledge. We'll we'll learn more about that. There's you know um, kind of you know the facts and the what and the how yeah. um, that'll come out through the session. But what what else do you think attendees will take away from the session if they come attend and listen and submit questions and um, take part in this? Yeah, so I, I think there are a couple things. One is you know helping advance our thinking as a movement. So, so, you know, helping Karen and I and the others who are associated with the National Patient Safety Board advance our own thinking about why this intervention could potentially uh, accelerate gains. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe learn something ourselves by reflecting on it together. Um, so leave us all in a stronger place to to move forward more decisively and, and with greater power on safety. Um, also learning some of the specifics, if you agree that this is an important step about what you can do to help uh, advance passage of the National uh, Patient Safety Board Act and reminding ourselves that you know, it's not only a long way from introduction of a bill to passage, but even once the bill is passed, it has to be implemented through regulation, and then it has to be run in a uh, way that produces the power we want it to be. And so we need a super informed, uh, super committed group of people who care about this issue to be walking together through all these stages of the process uh, for better. And then the last thing is, I think it's a great opportunity to learn from my my co-presenter, Karen Feinstein, who, uh, you know, I work for at the Jewish Healthcare Foundation, and we co-created with others the Pittsburgh Regional Healthcare Initiative. And she has for decades sort of pushed forward to honestly ask where we are, what is the gap to where we need to go, challenging convention, coming up with new experiments, and sort of pushing us to get better. And I think it's a great chance to learn from Karen. I agree. I appreciate, you know, thanks to you for the opportunity to to meet Karen uh, here. Um, I've heard a lot about her work over time. So it's great to um, hear directly from her what she's going to be sharing. I look forward to hearing what she does share and and in conversation with you on um, the 25th, um, because you you have a longer history of, of working with her, I know. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it'll be good. And, and by the way, we don't always agree, which is part of it, right? A good designing, good experiment. So there we go. Well, and designing a lively and informative uh, conversation on right. the 25th. So uh, again, that's going to be um, a panel with Ken Siegel, CEO of Value Capture, and Dr. Karen Wolk Feinstein, the president and CEO of the Pittsburgh Regional Health Initiative. We hope you'll register. You can do so at valuecapturellc.com slash webinars or look for a link in the show notes or description where you're watching or listening to this. So um, Ken, thank you again um, for being part of this and and thanks for giving us a a quick preview today. Absolutely, Mark. I'm really looking forward to the 25th and I hope others will join and give us your best thinking as part of the webinar experience and follow up after.